And welcome back once again, everybody. Jim Crane with you on a gorgeous sunny afternoon here on the coast of California with another installment of the Patina Chase featuring the Voyager satchel built by a gentleman named Drew Reyes of West Street Leather. So if you've seen the previous installments in the first one, the bag was very, very pale. It was almost white. It was a like a washed linen or a, like a cream color. And that's because the bag was made from full grain vegetable tan leather that was untreated and undyed in any way. And as the bag was being assembled in Drew's um, leather shop, he did not expose the hide to UV light. So when it arrived, I opened the box and here is this white bag. And if you're brave enough to, to purchase a white bag from a website photograph, you are gonna have a lot of fun. If it is undyed, untreated vegetable tan leather, you are going to get to see it do some really cool things um, as you carry it and handle it and use it, where if you bought a, a bag that was already pre-dyed or you know colored already, the leather was already colored in the tannery, um, that, un or that dyed leather, that colored leather, it will age and it will develop a patina if it's vegetable tan leather. Um, but you're not going to get to see it do what this bag has done, going from almost very, very ghost-like to taking on a lot of really cool color. Um, and all of this color that you see on this bag is from UV light. So um, I haven't treated the bag in any way. Um, it just started to turn this honey color almost immediately. The first place I carried this bag, we went to lunch out in Morro Bay and we were sitting out on a dock outside in the sunlight and this was sitting on a chair next to me. I wasn't really paying any attention to it. Um, we got back home a few hours later and I popped open the, the uh, flap and I could see this very noticeable suntan line. <laughs> I thought, wow, I didn't, I didn't even notice it while we were there. Um, and this bag turned this color very, very rapidly. It's almost like you know, film. It just, the sunlight just exposed uh, the leather and it just turns this dark color right away. So as far as the color that it's at now, it's not gonna get any darker from sunlight. This is as dark as the bag's going to get because of exposure to UV light. It will get darker, but because of the oils in your hands and from touching it and rubbing those in. The oils that you impart through your fingers and your hands, those oils will oxidize with time and they turn very, very dark, almost black, um, if, you, if you have the, the piece that long and you use it that much. So in all of the touch places, it will get very, very dark with time. But as far as UV light, this is it. So you'll notice a couple of things from the original um, bag, and that are, is I've made some changes. I've added some personalizations. And I will do this occasionally, rarely, to a bag that I really, really love. And I know I'm going to keep it. I know I'm not going to be reserving it for resale later or to give away to a friend. I know it's going to be my bag, and I'm going to personalize it um, with things that I like, things that mean something to me. So with this bag here, there is this very heavy-duty patch. It's a quotation from a gentleman named Horace Kephart. And he was a naturalist. He was instrumental in founding the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. He lived alone like a hermit out in the backwoods. And um, in the evenings, he would write books about wood lore and woodcraft and how to live you know, out in the woods and survive on your own. And those books are really a lot of fun to read. If it's winter time and it's raining or snowing, you got a fire going, you crack open one of those books and start reading about his life and how to survive in the woods by yourself. It's, a, it's really a lot of fun. Um, so that's Horace Kephart. You can still get copies of his books um, today. Um, I also added this little brass plate. It's from the White Pine Copper Company. I had um, several of these that I purchased years ago on eBay just as um, kind of like a, a decoration to put on a bag. And I thought it would bring these two um, brass lift the dot fasteners more um, kind of into harmony with three pieces as opposed to two. 
Um, these are not real attractive, um, but they are so much fun to use. They are indestructible. They're, they're taking on their own patina. Um, they're easy to get into. They're easy to close. Um, I just love these things. The more I use this bag, the more I love have using these kind of fasteners on a daily basis. I have a few of these on other bags. Colonel Littleton uses them on a couple of bags that I have. Um, but um, I really, really like using them. And I thought I would just wanted to balance the symmetry um, with a little added tag there. I also added my brand to the bag. And um, this just kills the value of a bag. <laughs> so if you think you're gonna resell the bag, do not do things like this to your bag. Just leave it the way it came. Uh, if you have any notion whatsoever that you want to resell it later, because this just kills the value of a bag. Unless, you know, you are somebody famous, um, you know, like Elvis Presley or somebody, you know, but, but don't do that. <laughs> um, I added this little piece here to hold my keys. It's just a very simple little, it's a strap of leather, two Chicago screws and a small D-ring. I could have used just a brass key hook, which I have several of, and just hook it over the top of the gusset. But I like using these swivel snaps. In fact, this one I'm holding in my hand, <laughs> I have had since about 1990. I just like the convenience of clipping it onto my belt loop. Um, if I'm not carrying a bag or if I am carrying a bag, I just like using it that way. And you'll even notice here there are some lines from where my keys have been running on this bag for a while now. Okay, so um, on the back of the bag, this is how I carry my cell phone, typically my iPhone. I usually have it on a lanyard and I always carry it in the back pocket. And I put it in there like that and I retrieve it like that. So my hand doesn't go into the pocket all that often. Occasionally I'll put a receipt in there or something will fall down there, I'll go in. Um, but my hand doesn't go in there very much. So inside that pocket, the bag is virtually the same color as it was when I received the bag. It's gotten a little bit darker just because of the fugitive sunlight that has kind of gotten into that slit, but it was that very, very pale color. Um, you'll remember when I got the bag. So um, that's kind of cool. I, I kind of like that. Let me take this shoulder strap off. The shoulder pad that Drew used, um, he cut obviously from another hide. So it has darkened a little bit, but not very much. Um, so this is definitely not come cut from the same hide as the strap itself or the hide to build the bag. Doesn't bother me one bit. Put that aside. Okay, let's get into the bag. In here, you'll notice I've done a couple of more bad things. I've personalized it with my name on a brass plate. I had these made years ago. I will do this occasionally to a bag, um, but only the bags I know I'm going to keep. You never want to do that to a bag that you're not sure about. This little piece here is actually an antique key from the Iwani Hotel in Yosemite National Park. It's my favorite hotel in the world. I found this old brass key that they used um, back in the 1920s. I removed the key part and just attached it to my bag because I like this symbol of the Awanichi Indians that lived in the valley. They were basket weavers, and this is kind of their symbol, and I just think that's really cool, so I added that. You'll notice that um, the bag is still holding its integrity, but it is getting these, these wrinkles um, from, you know, carrying the bag, using the bag, getting into it and stuff. Um, but the nature of vegetable tanned leather is it will develop a patina, it will soften a little bit, but it will never lose its structure. So it's a wonderful product to make a bag from that you plan on keeping for a long, long time. On this gusset, I just have this little flashlight clipped over it. Um, I usually have a flashlight hooked onto a bag somewhere. This is a really cool little, um, Cool little flashlight has several different powers um, and I'll put a link below if you're interested in one of these. It also has a UV light so if you're in a hotel and you want to make sure your hotel room is clean um, you've got a UV light as well. So um, cool little thing. 
Inside the bag, I've got it outfitted the way I, I carry stuff every day. I've got my Mascon uh, Chunky Charlie wallet built by Artie Shell. And he built this for me, oh, seven or eight years ago. And um, it's gotten a lot of use. You can see it's very well broken in by now. He also made this for me about the same time. I, I use a thing called a day timer. So just to keep track of things going on in my life. And I asked Artie if he would kindly build me one of these and he was nice enough to, to build one for me. I might be the only person in the world who has one of these. Now I feel kind of special. <laughs> it's gotten a lot of use. It's been broken in for many years. I did personalize this with a cool 1902 Indian head penny and also this uh, vintage antique Wells Fargo brass shield that I attached with some very tiny little copper rivets. So I love this piece. I use it every single day. Um, I've got my eyeglasses case in there from vegetable tanned, undyed, untreated vegetable tanned leather that I carry. I always have first aid and hand sanitizer. I use um, the Clorox hand wipes instead of uh, little bottles of hand sanitizer. If one of those little bottles opens up in your bag and you're carrying undyed, untreated vegetable tanned leather, it is going to stain the bag and the stain will never come out. So I use hand wipes. Um, I've got my Leatherman and a bit set that I always carry with me. Never know when you're gonna need it. Business cards, always have those. Eyeglass uh, cleaner and my trusty measuring tape. So Drew did attach a lanyard inside for your keys and I've actually attached a little pocket knife to this and have carried it that way um, several times. But I typically don't use it for my keys because I like them hanging out here. This is bag number three. It's just got a simple pocket in the back. Um, and one of the main things I did to this bag, which I have done now to about six bags over the course of 30 something years. And that is when a bag, when I get a bag that I love and I'm gonna use it and it is made in a certain way where one piece of leather is used for the flap, for the back and the bottom gusset and then back up again here, um, it will have kind of a rounded bottom to it. And it's just me. It ha the bag will work flawlessly like that for years, but I've just got this thing where I like the bag to be rigid when I set it down. So on this bag, I added a second bottom to it. It's a piece of 14 ounce vegetable tanned leather um, from uh, Herman Oak that I just used some Chicago screws and attached it to the bottom of the bag. And while I was doing that, I wanted to pay homage to the maker of the bag, Mr. Drew Reyes, um, to apologize for defiling his bag. And so I put his brand on the bottom as well to kind of um, say, hey Drew, sorry. Um, but I do like having the second bottom um, just because I like the stability it, it gives the bag. I will occasionally carry a water bottle in there. And if the bag is not stable, if I set it down, especially on a, a railing on a dock side, I don't want it to just fall over and go into the drink. So um, I've done this to several bags. I still own them because um, this kind of really kind of will defile the bag in my estimation, but I love the practicality of it and I love the mechanical function of it making the bag a little more stable when it's top heavy. So there it is, folks. Um, probably won't do another installment of the patina chase for a long time because this is, like I said, this is as dark as it's going to get from um, UV light. It will get darker from handling, but that's gonna take years and years um, for that to happen. So, um, I thank you for watching. We'll be back with another review on some more products that are, that are coming up soon. Bye-bye.